Okay, so I wanted you to look over your investigating enthalpy and entropy lab. Some things I wanted you to pull out of there. Uh, make sure you read the background information. It has some good information there for you. Pre-lab questions. I've just summed mine up pretty quickly. Um, enthalpy has an H in it. That's how I remember that enthalpy symbol is going to be a capital H. And it means heat energy. Your entropy is going to be a capital S. It means disorder. And the universe prefers to be disordered because that's a low energy thing. Okay. When I'm looking at solid, liquid, and gases, solids have high order to them, and thus they are they take a lot of energy to maintain that order. It's like keeping your room clean. In order to keep your room clean, you've got to constantly always walk in there and and fix things and put things up. It's easier just to let it go crazy, right? So states and matters, as I go from solid, liquid, to gas, I increase entropy. Exothermic processes, hopefully you know that exo means out. These are the ones that are going to be, they're going to feel warm to touch because the heat is going out of the system. Endo means in, so my heat is going into the system or it feels cold. Another way of thinking about it. Then, observations, hopefully you have something along the lines of what I have here. Small white particles, um, hopefully the calcium chloride you recognize that it had spherical particles instead. A lot of students on the first one said there was no change to the sodium chloride. Um, all three of them, the solid dissolves. NH4, Cl, kind of surprised some of y'all that it actually decreased in temperature. And then calcium chloride was the warmest. Um, this is just my data. Uh, it's not necessarily it has to be your data, but in case you need data, there's data there for you. And then question number one is asking you to calculate the delta T's. And so I just have mine set up. I just took my numbers from the graph. It's always T final minus T initial. And so we find out that mixture one and mixture two are both um, have a negative sign for the temperature change. And mixture three is a positive. Okay. So going back to our previous lab, we mentioned that Q is equal to negative delta H. And so if we, we recall that and we think about that, when I have an endothermic process, my Q is negative. So a negative times negative makes a positive, which is why the delta H here for these two is going to be positive. And then my Q for calcium chloride, when I calculate it, since my temperature change is positive, my Q will be positive, thus my delta H will be negative. And so these are just general ideas and thoughts on it. Also, make sure you think about how the energy is being moved around in the system. Okay. Uh, question number four, one is you to break down the, the compound into its components. This is kind of a new skill for some of you, so I have this here. Um, I'm just breaking into the ions on the other side. One thing I want you to notice is that we said that NH4Cl was an endothermic reaction and calcium chloride was exothermic. And so with that known, I'm going to place the heat on the reactant side. And then on the calcium chloride, the heat will be on the product side. Which ties back to your previous lab we did. So mixture one, mixture one, two, and three, they all dissolve, which was the observ observation that we had earlier. Entropy means disorder. And so since I went from a solid substance into a liquid or aqueous substance, I've increased the disorder, and so my delta S is positive for all three. All right, last thing. So we, we've already said that delta S was positive. So I'm just going to put that down on our chart. All right, we said that on the other one. Um, our T, so we go back to our first chart, and we have that the first two were negative, and the first one was positive, okay? The delta H, we talked about this, that it's gonna be the reverse of my Q. And so since my Q is negative, my delta H is gonna be positive for the first two and negative for the last one. So this all comes from our results. So the last thing is, 
one of our Gibbs. Okay, so Gibbs is going to refer to this right here. And so they're wanting you to put the signs in there and then figure out what your delta G would be. Would it be positive or would it be negative? So if H is positive, T is negative, and S is positive, then overall, this is positive. These two basically mirror each other, so I already know this is going to be positive. So H is negative, negative minus a positive times a positive. Depending on the numbers, we're going to say that it's negative. This will kind of depend on the numbers that we have. Okay, Gibbs just tells us if it's going to go or no go. And we'll talk more about that in a later part. Conclusion, um, we're wanting you to explain why ice melt, what ice melt is and what the different types of ice melt are and how does it work to melt ice. Um, so think about that. I showed you a video also in class in regards to this. And uh, good luck.